What's up everyone, it's Nick McCullum here, and in this video we're going to be working through the practice problems on dictionaries from my course on Python Fundamentals. Now before we get started, I invite you to subscribe to this channel so that you can get all of my future videos showing you how to become a better software developer. With that out of the way, let's dig into these practice problems on dictionaries. Let's start with problem one, which says, create a dictionary with two elements. The keys of the element should be first name and last name, and the values of the element should be your first and last name. Name the dictionary variable my sorry, name dictionary. We'll start by writing out the variable name, name dictionary. On the other side of the assignment operator, we need to write curly brackets because as you'll remember from the lesson, all Python dictionaries are created using curly brackets. So uh, I'm gonna actually hit the enter key here to spread this out over multiple lines. And uh, as you can see, the Jupyter Notebook has some excellent syntax handling there. And uh, we'll start by writing the first key and the first value. Now the key goes in uh, bracket, sorry, quotation marks like that, and so does the value. So the first key is first name, as we specified, and then the value of this key should be your first name. And as you guys know, my name is Nick McCollum, so that is Nick. Then we put a comma, and on the next line, we will write last name, and then colon is McCollum. Now, we will run this code cell. It doesn't show any errors, but there's a few things that we can do to make sure that this ran properly. First, we'll put the variable inside a print statement. So name dictionary. And this shows, yeah, a dictionary first name, Nick, last name, McCollum. And then just to make a 100% sure that this was this is indeed a dictionary, we can use the type function to return the type of this data structure. And this should return dictionary. Or dict is actually how it's abbreviated in Python. Perfect, so that's done. Problem one is uh, no problem at all, and we will move on to problem two. Return the India flag from the following dictionary. So let's take a look at this country flags dictionary. Its keys are China, India, and the United States, and the values of those keys are strings, where the only element within the string is a character that represents that country's flag. So how do we return the India flag from that dictionary? You'll recall from our lesson on dictionaries that if you pass in the key of something in a dictionary within square brackets at the end of the variable name, it will actually return the corresponding value. So in this case, we will write country flags, put square brackets on the end of the variable, and then within the square brackets, we'll pass in the key of the India flag. Now this is the value, so the key is India. And this should return the India flag. Excellent, let's move on to problem three. Problem three says, generate a list of all of the keys from the following dictionary. Make sure it is a real list and not a different data structure. So this problem doesn't look too hard at the outset, you can remember from our lesson that if you put the dot keys method on the end of a dictionary, it will return all of the keys from that dictionary. Now, the real kicker here is that that method by default doesn't actually return a list, it returns a special kind of data structure. So let's take a look to see what this means. Cardict dot keys, and it returns a dict underscore keys object. Now, how do we turn that into a real Python list and not a different data structure as specified in the problem? Well, we can actually wrap it in a list function and this should return a true list. Now, that looks good, but how can we make 100% sure that it is a list and not some sort of other different data structure? The easiest way is to wrap this in a type function and this should return list. Awesome, so this is the solution we need and that type function was just an extra check. So we can move on to problem four. Generate a list of all of the values from the following dictionary. Make sure it is a real list and not a different data structure. This is very similar to problem three in that we want to use a method to return all of the values instead of all of the keys from the dictionary. So to do this, we will start by wrapping the whole thing in a list meth, uh, sorry, a list function like we did before. And then within the list function, we will type baseball teams dot values, and we get a list of all of the values from that dictionary. Perfect. Let's move into problem five. Now this says, remove all of the elements from the following dictionary. To do this, we'll use the dot clear method, and this simply just deletes all of the keys and all of the values from the dictionary. Once we do this, if we print age dictionary, it should return an empty dictionary. So let's do that. Age, sorry, age dictionary dot clear. And then on the next line, we will print age, age dictionary. Awesome, and it returns an empty dictionary as desired. Now this says, remove Peter Power's entry from the phone book dictionary to below. You'll recall from our lesson that we can use the pop method to remove an entry from a dictionary. So uh, what we'll do is phonebook.pop and in here we will type the key of the entry that we're gonna remove from the dictionary. So this is Peter Power. Now, 
you'll notice that if we run this function, it will actually return the value associated with the Peter Power key. Yes, you can see it returned his phone number there. Now, to make sure that this actually executes properly, we will run a print statement with phone book inside of it, and this should return the phone book minus the Peter Power entry. Sorry, what am I doing? Print phone book. There we go. As you can see by printing out the dictionary again, it actually excludes the Peter Power entry and the problem is solved. So that's it for our dictionaries practice problems. Thanks so much for watching this video and be sure to subscribe if you're interested in more content that will teach you how to be a better software developer. Thanks.